Okay, guys. Um, so today I'm going to pray and then we'll get into our message. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day and I thank you for everything you've given to us, Lord. And I pray as, you know, I reveal things about my life and about my struggles, Father God, that you give me the grace to say these things and you give people the grace to hear them. I pray, Father God, that you just um, help people hear and know and understand what you're trying to get through in this message and that they just have the, the heart to understand and to receive it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So, you know, it's really funny how a year goes. It's funny how, you know, you can set, especially as the new year approaches, you set back and you think, okay, well, did I meet my goals? What happened this year? You know, and you kind of try to sum up a year, you know, all in a few days. And I, I was setting back and I was thinking about this year, 2022, and I was thinking about all of the changes that I faced this year. And that, you know, there were so many things that happened in my life this year. Um, my job changed significantly. There was a lot more responsibilities, a lot more planning, a lot more um, responsibility, honestly, that came with my job this year. I had people come in and out of my life, people that I gave um, my heart to 100%, my love, and you know, they were here one day and gone the next. You know, I, I felt this year, and I'm gonna reference my feelings a little bit in this, but you know, this year I felt very, um, very alone at times, very looked over, very left out. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, you know, this year was hard on me at times, you know? And although, it was hard and I had a lot of um, experiences that were not fun, I would not change them for the world. And many of the things that I faced this year hurt. They hurt badly. And you know, there were times that I cried myself to sleep. There were times that I felt like I was losing my footing, not only you know, as a teacher or as a mother or as a wife, but as a Christian, you know, and not not losing my footing in the in the context that, you know, I didn't believe in God, not losing my footing in the context that I was um, wondering, you know, I wasn't in doubt or in unbelief, you know, but losing my footing in the sense of God, I know you've put this in me. God, I know you've made me these promises. Why aren't they coming to fruition? Right. And as I focused on those things as I focused on, you know, what was going on in my life. It was like I was taking one blow after another. And the summer, the summer was kind of the, um, it, it all came to a head. You know, every, everything happened, you know, within a few weeks, one blow after another. You know, someone left my life. Um, someone decided, you know, this should happen or this should happen. I was told that my job was changing drastically and it was like one blow after another. And as these blows came crashing in on me, you know, I started to revert back to some of those old character defects that I had when I was younger, you know, and these character defects were put in me as a young age. You know, I had a turbulent childhood at times and I learned to cope with things or I learned to, you know, use different um, coping mechanisms to make myself feel better or to overcome. And I love our God. Our God is an amazing and a wonderful God because when he wants to take you to the next level and he wants you to be something that he knows you can be, you're like that big ball of clay and you have to be refined and you have to be molded and you have to be stretched and you have to be put into the fire. And this summer was really a fire refining moment for me. And these character de defects that had plagued me for years, you know, insecurity, trying to please everyone, trying to be the person who um, everyone loved, you know, even to the detriment of myself at times. As I, you know, as I was giving into those character defects, I began to break, 
you know. And each situation came up, and every time something would happen, I would feel more abandoned, and I would feel more alone, and I would feel more afraid, and I would feel like I was, you know, not good enough. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not good enough for this calling that God has put on my life. You know, maybe I'm not good enough. You know, maybe I'm going to be that person who's going to, you know, um, love somebody. And, and, you know, and I'm not talking about like my immediate family here, you know, so I just want to put that out there. But, you know, I have a, I have a tendency to find people who are hurting, to find people who need love and I jump in head first and I love them with every fiber of my being. And you know, there are times in my life where I do that and I find someone who who needs help, who needs love, who needs that that reassurance and then they get better and they they move on. You know, and and I have realized and God has given me a revelation that he puts people in your life for a season sometimes. So I just kind of want to clear that up before I go any farther. But, you know, I began to listen to the lies that the devil was feeding me, you know, that, you know, I was always going to be that person who, you know, found this person that needed help and I love them and I help them and I, you know, I help them grow with God and then they're just going to leave, you know. And it made me start thinking, well, you know, why, you know, why, why would this person stay or, you know, and I never doubt, you know, like my husband, I have an amazing and a wonderful husband. But when you get into a place in your life where you start to have those doubts, you know, that opens an inch for the devil. And if you open an inch for him in your mind, in your life, if you open that inch, he'll take a mile, you know, and when, when this person that I love dearly, kind of cut ties with me, no fault of of mine or maybe even no fault of theirs, you know. But when they cut those ties, you know, I was heartbroken, you know. And then when, you know, my job changed, I had given that devil that inch, you know. And he's like, well, maybe, maybe your boss thinks this or maybe your boss thinks that. And everything kind of imploded on me. And I was thinking, you know, well, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe this, maybe that. And hit after hit kept coming and I was an emotional basket case. I mean, ugly crying. I spent three days in bed. I mean, just crying. My husband, you know, Katina, how can I help you? Let me console you. What is going on? And I was, you know, I was ugly crying and I, I was incoherent and I couldn't tell him what was wrong, you know, because I was mad and I was angry and I was wrestling. I felt like not only with myself and my own inner demons, but also with God, you know, God, why do I feel this way? God, what is going on? God, show me. Right. And I had to get to the point of breaking before he could show me the insecurities that I had, you know, I was, I was loving this person because I wanted that love back. You know, I wanted, I wanted to know that this person felt loved. I wanted to know that this person, um, had everything that they needed, but that also gave me that feeling of accomplishment. And, you know, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, nine, the heart is deceitful above all things, above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And you know, as I'm having my three day emotional mental breakdown, I realized that after God gave me this revelation that yes, the, the heart is de deceitful. Your mind is deceitful, you know, and Although the things that I experienced this summer were lousy, they were not fun. You know, when you put your trust and your love in a friend and they just cut ties, it hurts. It's heartbreaking. But your love and your worth and your self-confidence should not come from the way you feel. It should not come from, you know, external sources, your husband, your kids, your friends your church, it should come from your relationship with God. 
And the truth is, you know, as humans, there are times that we don't understand everything in life. You know, we don't understand why that friend left us, or we don't understand why someone died. We don't understand why we were passed over for a promotion. We don't understand, you know, why things happen. But the truth is, is that if we give the devil even an inch in our mind, he will take those insecurities and he will wrap them in a pretty neat little bow. And he will say, oh yeah, you remember that time when you were younger and something bad happened? Mm, yeah, okay, so maybe, maybe you are gonna look, get looked over. Maybe you are destined to always be that person that's hurt. Maybe you are destined to be that person who people always leave. And you know, the truth is, is that the Bible tells us in both 1 Corinthians 14, 33 and in John 8, 44, that the devil is a liar and he is the author of lies, right? And if you listen to those lies, you, he will take them and he will manipulate you. And sometimes it's a struggle to understand our own hearts. You know, it's a, it's a struggle to understand the person that we are in, on the inside, you know, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, that's hard, right? Because even though, you know, we have this great relationship with God, we still live in a body, right? We still have our, our soul and our personality defects. And the truth is, if we focus on the lies, if we focus on the negative, if we focus on the things that the devil is trying to get us to focus on, we take our eyes off of God and we take our eyes off of what we are truly called to do. And you know, this year, like I said, it was hard and it was rough and losing people and changing positions and doing all of these things were so hard, but they have put me in this place of quiet and contentment you know, and I wouldn't change it for the world. And you know, it took me having that three day emotional breakdown. And you know, and the funny, the kind of the backstory of this is you know, I was riding my lawnmower because I love to mow. When I mow, I'm out there and we have about an acre and I'm praying and I'm listening to my Bible and I'm all of this. And I was, I had just gotten finished with a book and I was praying to God, you know, God break off of me any insecurities, break off of me anything that is hindering my walk with you, is hindering what you want me to do in my life. And kid you not, it was probably two weeks later that I got punch after punch after punch after punch. And then I'm like, well, wait, God, this isn't what I asked for. And it was, it was exactly what I asked for, you know? So be careful what you ask for. But, you know, the truth is, is that all of these hits and these emotional, this emotional roller coaster that I was on this summer brought me to a place where I could better understand myself. I could better understand, you know, the insecurities I have, you know, because, you know, when we begin to seek God and we begin to seek his guidance, Sometimes he has to burn out of us some of those insecurities before he can take us to the next level. And I realized over this summer that I'm not defined by the friends I have. It doesn't matter if I have any friends, right? I'm not defined by my job. Yes, I love teaching, I love my students, and I love being the best at what I do. But that does not define me. You know, I am not defined by my church. I am not defined by, you know, my work in the nursing home. I am defined by God, by who he says I am, by who he has called me to be. And I realized that this summer, that after my breakdown, after I, you know, the dust settles and you realize, hey, there's something God is doing in you you know, and you, you kind of clear up. I realized that God knows our minds and our hearts, you know, in Jeremiah 17, 10, it says, I, the Lord search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to their deeded, or according to their deeds deserved. You know, the truth is, I love this verse because I realized he knows me even better than I know myself. And when I prayed that prayer 
Lord, you know, show me my insecurities. Because I, I thought, you know, I had worked through so much of this. You know, when I prayed, you know, show me what it's going to take to get me to the next level. He knows what we need. He knows our insecurities. He knows our good and our bad character defects and our character traits. He knows these things, right? And the truth is, is we have to go to him. We have to pray. We have to seek. We have to ask. We have to be the people who are willing to walk through the fire, right? And maybe that means you're going to have an emotional breakdown for a couple days. You know, I'm not sorry I did. You know, and I could sit here and I could say, you know, I've been a Christian for a lot of years. I shouldn't have gotten to that point. But the truth is, sometimes we need those emotional breaking points so that we can grow closer to God. And we are never, ever, ever finished until the moment we bow our knee and we hear, "Good, well done, good and faithful servant. So as I'm closing, you know, I want you to think about this. You know, they say hindsight is 2020, and it really is. You know, looking back over the summer, maybe I could have, you know, prayed sooner, or maybe I could have, you know, talked to my husband a little more before I really felt like I was going to have an emotional breakdown. But the end result is something so magnificent, you know, because I am. I am steps ahead of the woman I was this summer, you know, and for that I am grateful. So no matter what you're going through right now, you know, maybe you're getting hit one after another after another, stop and say, Lord, show me, show me what you want me to learn from this. And maybe, you know, maybe you won't have to have a three day, you know, cry fest, ugly crying in your bed. You know, maybe he'll give you that instantaneous um, revelation right then, you know, or maybe like me, maybe you're a little bit stubborn, right? I hate to admit it, but that is one of my character defects. I am a little bit stubborn. I don't think for me personally, I would have learned near as much if I would not have been hit over and over and over the summer. If I would have not had my three day emotional breakdown, you know, through it, I learned how great God was. I learned how much he really truly knows me. I learned about myself and I learned how amazing my amazing and wonderful husband is. You know, so as I leave you, <clears throat> I pray that this year is a year of revelation for you. I pray that whatever God needs to show you he shows you and that you are willing to listen. You are willing to change. You are will willing to mold and to grow because I can tell you that it is so much better on this side. It is so much better knowing who you are in Christ, knowing your character defects. Even if you've been with Christ for 25, 30 years, there are still things in you that God wants to change and mold. He doesn't leave us stagnant. You know, a stagnant pond is gross and nasty. You know, he is living water. Living water has to flow. That means that you have to flow and you have to move with him. So um, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time.